listening to music. It's one of my favorite pastimes along with being lazy and going to sleep. But probably my favorite genre of music outside of R&B, rap, pop, rock, contemporary, classic, jazz, and Christmas music is probably video game music. You get so accustomed hearing the soundtracks from your favorite games when you're playing them for hours on end that they start to become pretty much earworms. There's music tracks that I grew up with for years because I've heard it my entire life and I can't imagine living without them. These songs have been ingrained into my brain. I have PTSD from hearing the Rabbits Go Home startup screen on the Wii. I have a mental disorder. Game companies are kinda iffy when it comes to releasing their video game music to the general public. If you're lucky, they may put the music in the game itself with an in-game music player. And if you're really lucky, or sometimes unfortunate, developers might even make the music available on a separate disc that you could buy or putting on a streaming service too. But with the rise of the internet, it has become extremely easy to hear your favorite songs on the go. Why, with just a simple search online, you can find all the songs you want from different games spanning decades. No longer do I have to try to fit my Wii into my pocket to hear my favorite tracks from Mario Party 8 on the go. I can just find it on the internet. However, one company that has done its darnest to make it a bit difficult to find video game music online is none other than Nintendo. Internet users have uploaded thousands of soundtracks from the large library of games that Nintendo has, with varying results. Sometimes it's allowed online and sometimes it's taken down. There's been a couple of times that videos of music that I've had saved and playlisted have completely disappeared, which is why I typically have a separate document where I track all the songs I like, should in case they go missing from the internet. Obscure titles from the past, games from consoles that have been forgotten about, have amazing soundtracks and they deserve to be recognized and adored by its fans. But for the many games that Nintendo has, there wasn't a clear cut way to get access to this music except for using the internet. This has honestly made it hard for myself to find music online. I have to trust that users online are uploading it, using the right titles, and really, this task of tracking composers, titles, and music shouldn't really fall on the fans. It should fall on the developers and the companies. Gladly, all this has changed, kinda, as randomly, Nintendo has announced their very own Nintendo Music app. It's what I've always dreamed of having to pay a subscription to listen to the Wii menu music. This announcement was extremely out of the blue and random. There was really no build up to this being a concept that Nintendo was leaning towards. I can say that when Nintendo constantly removing music online and coming after users that took time out of their life to upload it to the internet, there was always this idea that Nintendo could just do this themselves by either releasing it on streaming services or making their very own app. And guess what they chose to do? Release a good app. Well, kinda. The Nintendo Music app. I won't lie, with this being announced, I was a bit skeptical with how this would be executed. But we're talking about Nintendo, I have little faith in them. My first thought upon seeing the app was that most of this music could have been uploaded to a streaming service and that probably would have been a better idea. For me, I use Apple Music and for ease of access and convenience, I would have preferred to have this music placed on regular streaming services. But no, I have to have an extra app on my phone. This is taking up space right next to my McDonald's, Wingstop, and Tinder apps. I feel like Nintendo could have made more of a profit if they released this music on streaming services instead. I don't think people are creating Switch Online accounts solely for the purpose of listening to music, but I do think there's a specific reason as to why they wanted to use an app. The app itself looks great. Despite being in dark mode all the time, it's organized well and it's easy to use. Starting off, we have representation from a decent amount of Nintendo IPs. There's Kirby, Pokemon, Mario, Zelda, Metroid, and Star Fox, and they even went as far as to get music from the Wii system itself. But I have to say that the pick of games is kind of questionable. See, Nintendo likes to take one step forward and then either not move or move a tiny step back. Nintendo tried to cover a bunch of systems too, which is admirable. So it's not just focused on modern music, but games from the past as well. Out of the gate, we have 23 games and the soundtrack from the Wii menu music too. But what makes this kind of questionable is the choice of games. We have the latest games here like Mario Wonder and Pikmin 4, fine. But for Kirby, we have Kirby Star Allies and not Kirby in the Forgotten Land or Kirby Return to Dreamland. We have Mario Odyssey, but not Mario 3D World. And I'm not really sure why Nintendo decided to do this unless they're really trying to not spoil new games, even though there is a feature to avoid spoilers. But that's besides the point. So far, there's heavy reps from the Switch era, but I do appreciate Nintendo getting random titles from the DS era with Nintendogs or from the GBA era with Fire Emblem Blazing Blade. 
These aren't necessarily games that come to mind when I think of Nintendo music from either consoles, so it's cool to see. I think Nintendo gave a bit of thought to the games that they wanted to include. Mario Kart 8 soundtrack is very necessary because of how many songs are there, and Mario Galaxy soundtrack seems perfect with how acclaimed the soundtrack is. I wouldn't say the picks so far are bad, but it does seem like there's a big waiting game for whenever they do drop soundtracks, which I guess people will just use the internet to listen to the music that they want to, which kind of defeats the purpose of the app? But whatever. I think Nintendo chose to use an app instead of a streaming service so that they can do their unique way of doing things. Like finding music based on characters, which I think is smart as characters can appear in multiple games and it'll make it easier to find different versions of songs that coincide with the character. Being able to extend songs is another thing that Nintendo wouldn't be able to do on streaming service. Granted, there's a replay feature on streaming services, but I think it's actually more customizable on the app when you only want to hear certain songs be extended on a playlist. Plus, the extended versions sound more seamless, which is an issue I ran into when listening to fan uploaded music online. So I'll give the point to Nintendo for this one. I can now listen to the Wii Shop channel music for a full hour. This is what phones were made for. Nintendo went as far as to include screenshots from the game from moments when the music is playing, which I think is more helpful than just putting the cover art in a random track title. For a lot of games, I have no clue what track goes with what level, so this attention to detail makes the experience a bit better for people that are forgetful, like me. Nintendo even has their very own playlists, which are nice, I guess? They have playlists called Top Tracks, and I'm not really sure how they know which top tracks are the most popular. I kinda doubt that Thwomp Ruins is one of the more popular tracks from Mario Kart 8, but what do I know? The top track for the Wii is the startup menu. Who the heck is listening to this? And how many times have they been arrested? So it makes me think that the top doesn't mean popular. To them, it's just whatever track Nintendo thinks is the best, I guess? I think if Nintendo wants to take it to the next level, they should take a page from other streaming services and have searchable playlists that are curated by other users. Would that be asking for too much? Yeah, it is. I'm getting my hopes up. The playlists that Nintendo have are a nice touch. They've definitely noticed the fan-made playlists that are posted online and took a page out of that book because they have different playlists for walking, going to sleep, taking a break. So it looks like they thought this out very carefully. I don't know. Color me shocked that they actually went the extra mile. Even the inclusions of games that are already linked to your account are on here, which I think is such a nice touch. Do I think there should be more improvement for the app itself? I don't know. Am I handsome? Actually, don't answer that question. As an app on its own, it's fine, but I think what makes Apple Music and Spotify fun to use is that there's this larger sense of community. When I'm using the Nintendo app, it feels like it's just me, by myself, and some interns at Nintendo. And again, there are some odd picks here, like Mario 64 not being here, and the only Pokemon game being on here is Scarlet and Violet. Xenoblade isn't even on here, and I feel empty inside. I feel like this will be yet another service that we'll have to wait for Nintendo to drip feed content on. Which isn't really the best idea since people will just keep finding ways to listen to the music that you're going after people for. It's not really making the impact that they thought this would have made, especially if we have to wait for so long for music. But I guess time will tell. I also think seeing what's the most popular track, kind of like a billboard chart, would be really sick to see. It'll make it easier to discover music from different franchises that you might have not thought to look into before. Either way, the amount of features in the app is nice, and you can tell that they thought of gamers first, music listeners second. Having the app locked off to switch online members is kind of funny, but I can't really get mad at Nintendo for doing that, as it's just another feature for them to promote and slowly release content for. Nintendo has such a large library of games and with that extremely large library of games comes hours upon hours of music that people have loved for years. They sort of struck gold with this app and I have to say there is so much more that Nintendo can do for this app but what we have so far is impressive for a company that I always have little faith in for modern tech. Will the decisions of what music they decide to release draw the ire of fans? Yes. But will the anticipation of what's to come excite most people like myself? Also yes, there are tons of soundtracks that I listen to online that are of low quality, that have skips and hitches in them and don't sound the best when extended. So to have an official way to listen to these tracks in their best quality, even though it's stuck behind an app that'll release it as slow as they possibly can, I think it's a fantastic idea that more companies should do. Listen, there's tons of work that needs to be made on the app, but Nintendo is finally heading into the right direction for once, and sure, while the app could credit composers and have a much larger library of music on launch, it's Nintendo making the right decision, which doesn't happen enough. I've gotta say that I'm pretty happy with Nintendo taking the first step towards making their music more accessible. It's been a long time coming, and while there's lots of improvements to be made, they're finally doing what's right, which is what's most important. And who am I to complain that a billion dollar company isn't letting me listen to the music from their dinosaur arts and crafts game? 
I'm a grown man. I've got different priorities to attend to, like going to sleep and being lazy. But this app is definitely a game changer, especially when it comes to discussions about preserving video game music. Plus, I get to exercise while listening to Nintendogs. This is the greatest app to ever exist. Oh.